January 15th, we are back with the UFC Fight Night and we have Giga Chikadze and Calvin Cater fighting on the main event and it's going to be awesome. Before we do get into it guys, Happy New Year. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you do enjoy it and let's get into it. So Giga Chikadze comes into the UFC. Nothing really blows me away and I'm sure a lot of people weren't really talking about Giga the way they are now when he came in. A few fights went to the decision, you know, he had some really decent wins actually. But it was more, in my opinion, 2020 that kind of got him going. So he started with Jermay Simmons and then he, he kicked, uh, he, the Giga kick came out and really showed the world against Cub Swanson, which was super impressive as you just seen what Cub Swanson did to Darren Elkins. So Cubs, Cubby's still there, he's still at that level. So Giga finishing him in ridiculous fashion was brilliant. And then, but then he fought Edson Barboza and Edson Barboza to me is the guy no one wants to fight because even if you do beat him, you lose years off your life. <laughs> he takes something from you in those fights. But with Giga, striking masterclass, it really was. Giga, nothing really phased him in that fight. He he wanted to show he's a better striker. Now, technicality-wise, they're really similar. But the difference in that was the pushing forward. The confidence of Giga in that fight was phenomenal. And landing the kicks over and over again, he wanted to show, I've got body, better body kicks than you. And Edson Barboza famously has some of the best and fastest like switch kicks, the calf kicks. Even his thigh kicks, the old Aldo style ones, just an outside of the leg kick, it's just so beautiful to watch. Giga shut that down. He put pressure on him, he closed the distance, and he implemented his own game plan and used his hands a lot more than we've seen him do. I would argue that those are the fights that really made Giga Giga because before that, he's fighting people like Jamal Emmers, split decision. Jamal did really well in that fight. Brandon Davis, Brandon Davis brought it in that fight. I know he took a lot of punishment, but he, he gave it to Giga and Giga didn't look crazy good in those fights. Omar Morales, he couldn't finish Morales and he had a seven inch reach advantage, seven inch height advantage on the guy. The guy looked two weight classes above him. So from then on, I was like, easy Giga. I, like, I know you're a very good striker, but are you that level? Beating Barboza for me, from showing the grappling skills of he nearly dart stroked the guy, to standing up and landing that clean shot and, and sitting him down, I think it was a three-piece combination. It was, it's a masterclass for me, that whole fight. And that, that to me goes, he's ready for something more. And Calvin Cater, what better way to match him than against Cater? So Cater's got a real mixed record here. His, his bag of tricks is all over the shop for me, but mainly I think Cater's an exceptional boxer, which I believe is why Max Holloway was shouting, I'm the best boxer when they were fighting because Max took him to town. He beat the piss out of him for five rounds. and. Cater for me is so good, but he's he's going to be that top five gatekeeper. I don't think Calvin Cater can ever make that jump into the one two spots. I don't know if he's ever going to fight for a title again. I, I hope I'm wrong because I really love his style. I really like him as a person. Whenever you watch him get interviewed, he seems so genuine. You know, he, he's a really good guy. And his skill set is phenomenal. The way he knocked out Jeremy Stevens with a step in elbow and then sliced him on the ground as well, phenomenal. The Danny Gay fight was a brilliant fight. If you haven't watched that, go back and watch that absolute war. Decision, obviously, for Calvin, but it's a great fight. You see him stop people like Ricardo Lemus and Chris Fishgold. Now, Chris Fishgold, for people that aren't aware in the UK scene, destroyed the regional circuit destroyed it. Everyone from the UK was like, Chris Fishgold is the man. He is going to be the next thing in the UFC. And he just choked. He just couldn't put it together on the main stage. And it's so upsetting. I don't know I don't know why. There might be really plausible reasons. Similar to like how Tom Brees almost, if people are aware of him, on the regional scene, in the gyms, he's the guy. He's so good. But he gets stage fright almost. And he just chokes at the last minute. Whereas... When he fought Chris Fishgold, you just saw it. You saw him absolutely shut him down, knock him out. Same with Lamas. Nobody knocks out Lamas like that. That right hand, he, he stepped in through the jab, saw the reaction of Lamas, and before even thinking, oh, I'm just going to wait and see if I can do it again, he just throws it straight away again. He knows the read, throws it again, hits the right hand. Lamas turns around and decks, hits the deck. So those knockouts for me were phenomenal. The one fight I would say that changed Cater for the better is the Zabit fight. Zabit is technically a ninja. There's no other way of doing it that he should be wearing a shell on his back and have a painter's name with a color band attached to him. The guy is crazy, you know. He was winning that fight clearly until the third round. 
And this is where Calvin comes in. This is why his beat has been exposed and we might have not seen him for a while. There's loads of underlining things. There might be an injury, there might be health issues, there might be politics involved, who knows? Some people I'm sure do. If you do know, leave a comment. But Calvin stepped up in that third and you saw, oh, he's a bit slowing down. Here we go, here's some holes and Calvin put it on and that was a, that was a five round fight. Calvin Cater is knocking Zabit out. And that is how that would have gone. Calvin Cater's boxing is so crisp. You can see it in every single one of his fights. His movement is great as well. Let's not underestimate the movement. He cuts angles beautifully. He lands a great check left hook and that straight right that he knocked out Lamas with is just his money all day long. Against Max Holloway, he was completely out of his depth. Max Holloway is that good. To me, Max Holloway won the second fight with Volkanovski. And we've seen how good Volkanovski is. He beat the snot out of Ortega. Ortega, Volkanovski, and Holloway are all banded up here for me. With Ortega slightly below, and then Max and Volkanovski up here. Max Holloway is the man. I'd like to see him move weight class personally, but that's another video. So what do you guys think is going to happen in this fight? Personally, I don't think that Giga's pressure styled striking is going to work as well against Keita as it did against Barboza. I think Keita has, I'd say, a lot better footwork than Barboza. And that might be crazy for me to say because Barboza has got good footwork, but I would consider more Barboza just a completely tie boxing style stance of a plodding along back and forth instead of side to side. Not much lateral. Keita has the lateral movement because he cuts the angles for, the, for, the, for, his, for his hands. The hands are going to be the key in this one. Giga has shown me that anyone can fall to his leg kicks. His, that left, especially the left body, that left body kick is a sniper. It's a bullet, it's a 50 caliber bullet hitting the human and it just shuts the whole body down hitting that liver. No choice, you have no choice if it hits your liver. You just, your body collapses and your brain's still there and you just don't know what happened. So for me, I'm going to go, I'm going to back Cater in this one. I really, I think Cater can do this. I think Cater's stepped up on the bigger stage. This is a five round fight. Earlier in his career, I would say Chikadze slowed down in the third rounds. He didn't get to the fourth and fifth, but he looked fresh in the third against Barboza. So I don't think the cardio is going to be particularly an issue. I think he comes in shape. I think he's prepared for this. He's going for the run. He's calling out the big names before his, you know, after his last performance. I think I'm still going to back Cater. I think Cater's been there. He's going to learn a lot in that Max Holloway fight. He's healed up. He's taken the time. And I think he's going to put on a show. I think it's going to be an absolute war. And I think Kate is going to come out on top. Let me know, guys, what you think is going to happen. If you have enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Happy New Year, guys. Like the video if you have enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.